The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Let us rejoice in the name of Christ So let us stand to sing um, our first hymn of all my favorites, Amazing Grace, in the third world, Amazing Grace. <laughs> Glory to God in the past, and 
peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And today's comment. Almighty and eternal God, who, for the firm foundation of our faith, allowed your holy apostle Thomas to doubt the resurrection of your son, till word and sight convinced him. Grant to us who have not seen it, that we may also believe, and so confess Christ as our Lord and our God, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now soon we read the Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were locked. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out to your hand. Put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord, my God. And then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet believe. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord, may my words do the job we are going to do. May our hearts grow closer to you. Amen. We have an enormous number of relationships. We have relationships with significant others. We have relationships with our foe. We have relationships with friends. Each relationship is different, unique. My relationship with my foe is almost umbilical. Horror for me is being at work without my foe. Unfortunately, <coughs> it has always been so. Even before mobile phones, I knew where every phone box was when I went away. I always had a need to, and quote ET, go home. It was on the weekend course once, and another course member barked, Can't you not go home? Yeah, I couldn't. That would be helped. But I just cannot break up with my phone. Have a relationship with it. Dr. Dishku um, says that a relationship is defined as the way in which two or more people or groups are connected, how they regard each other, how they behave towards each other. Two or more connected behave. We have a relationship with ourselves. How do we treat ourselves? How do we speak to ourselves? How do we connect to ourselves? There are two parts. I and me have a persistent argument over chocolate. I should not eat it. I'm going to eat it. Now, permanent discussion. Alcoholics self-meditate. 
hate because they are living with themselves is too difficult. How we treat other people in relationship, how they treat us, the time we offer, the attitude with which we speak, makes the quality of the relationship. Last week I was greeted by the most gorgeous smile when I came to a service. I felt I had been missed, that my presence was valued, I felt special. Just the simple, gracious act of acceptance to a smile can build strength in a relationship. So what we do in a relationship is important. When we build a strong relationship, we can say, with love, my friend, my partner, my child. Not in any sense of ownership. I can't own you. I don't want to own you. What value is there in a relationship which relies on ownership as a basis? Fear is a mean of keeping a person present. The my, in my last sentences, leads us to deep, warm, respectful relationships. That is unique to me and the other person. It exists nowhere else because that relationship is built exclusively between me and the other person. You and the other person. That relationship has a combination of characteristics that are not in any other relationship. There are things I tell a friend in here that I have no intentions of telling another friend, like the fact I don't like honey. My other friend, who isn't here, otherwise I wouldn't be saying this way, right? always tries to buy me honey. She's done it for years, and I really don't want to disillusion her. But I don't tell her. But a different friend knows I don't like honey. There are things I tell my children that I have no intentions of telling friends. And that's something I cannot demonstrate or illustrate here, is it? They are my relationships. Each special, each unique, each precious. God says, in the beginning I created you and then I let you go free in the hope that you would return to me. If you return to me, then you'll be able to feel my love, my care, my pride in you. If you turn away, I cannot force you to feel these things. I want you to be able to feel my love, my care. I so want you to turn your anxieties onto me and let me help. I may not be able to grant you every wish, but what I do, I do in love. God does not want to own us. She wants us to come to her in our own time, ever seeking a deeper and unique relationship. The relationship changing, developing, drifting with time and our needs. Thomas had been with the disciples when Jesus had appeared. He knew the man he loved, Jesus, died. <coughs> he was heartbroken. He knew that human death was the end. And he knew that he needed to be wearing false prophets, claiming to be the new Messiah. He would not accept that Jesus had risen. His grief and his humanness were such that Jesus' own predictions of being the body. Do you remember Jesus said that the temple would be raised in three days? And his probably thorough scriptural education of the New Old Testament had no place in his mind with some reference to Psalm 16. You have to think, well, I can't imagine, what did he think the disciples were trying to do? What on earth were they saying, and why? Thomas had such a faith in Jesus, but it was very based in humanness, that he refused to believe the resurrected Lord until he saw. Saw the evidence, not that only Jesus had returned, but he had holes in his wrists and his signs. To be frank, that's me as well. The turning point in my life came when standing in a lounge in one of the pits of my life, I screamed in anger at God, it's okay you telling me you can comfort me, but at this moment I need a hug, something with skin on. 
And you can't do that, can you? I was moved to go to church the next Sunday, something I've not done in years. And the minister at the front turned around and said, I think there are people in here who need comfort. Would the ministry team please stand and go and put their arm, it's well up, I think, you know, go and put their arm around somebody who'd like comfort. I needed proof. The more I needed it, the more God gave it. And the more God gave it, the more I didn't need it. But I had to be willing to be part of that living and immediate relationship. God's relationship with me is unique. And it's not like your relationship with her, or yours, or yours. It's totally unique. It's my relationship with God, just as yours is your relationship with God. Totally mine, totally hers. Your relationship, totally unique, totally between you and God. In this passage, Thomas demands proof. That's the relationship he has. His relationship, his unique, one-of-a-kind, special relationship with Jesus that demands proof. And with grace and acceptance and understanding, Jesus provides what Thomas needs. And because of that unique relationship, Thomas cries out, My Lord, my Lord. I invite you to spend the day silently, all crying out, My Lord, my Lord. There is no other relationship like that, the one you have with God today. She knows that you're not a bird and loves you for it. She knows that we swear at the driver and we'd rather you didn't. But that makes you you. And God loves us for it. Just as the slap and honey makes me me, and just like Thomas's proof makes him him. So in a short prayer, my Lord, my Lord, help us to remember just how special we are to you. My Lord, my God, say it often to remind ourselves just how special our relationship is with God. Thank you, Sue. Uh, Jenny would like to come up for our friend. Mercy and honesty. 
With them on our lives, to be used in your service, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'd just say it's lovely to be back with you. I don't see you for three years, and then two Sundays on the road. It's really nice. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. The Lord is right to give you thanks. God our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. You sent your Son to live among us. Jesus, our Saviour, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross. He died to save us from our sins. He rose in glory from the dead. You send your Spirit to bring you life to the world and clothe us with power from our high. And so we join the angels to celebrate and sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and thanked him. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Father, as we bring this bread and wine, remember this death and resurrection. Send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and his blood. Pour your Spirit on us that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth, and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. For honor and praise belong to you, Father. Jesus Christ, your Son and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Father has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, and we forgive those who trust in us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You see the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which He gave to you, and His blood which He shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that He died for you. Feed a name in your heart by faith and with thanksgiving.
bring his blood to us, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.